Well, his tune has changed. Now, along with businesses, sporting codes and celebrities, there are now calls for the unions to get involved in the Yes campaign. The Daily Telegraph reports on its front page today that controversial voice advocate Thomas Mayo has called for unions to use their right of entry rules under the Fair Work Act to push the yes case at job sites. Mayo told a group of buildings that anti-referendum campaigners, that they were... He said that they were the same, and this is his words, obviously, that they were the same bastards that hate workers. And he held this event at a construction site for the Canberra Hospital upgrade. Here's what he said. Have a look. would be f***ed, right? If you don't have a voice, you Those same bastards that hate workers have been getting out there and have been spreading misinformation and lies. And that video posted by the CFMEU. Still up for the moment. Hasn't been deleted yet. We'll see. Now, the Daily Telegraph's National Affairs Editor and Sky News host, James Morrow, who broke that story, joins me now. James, great to see you, as always, on a Thursday. Look, how did you assess this final parliamentary question time? This was the, the last time that the parliamentarians had the chance to go head-to-head -head before the referendum, which is going to be held exactly one month from today. You know, it was really interesting, Sherry. Usually on the last Thursday of a sitting period, there's kind of an energy, a bit of a last day of school feeling about a parliamentary question time. The emotion that I got watching it today was one of fatigue, tiredness. I got the sense that Prime Minister Anthony Albanese is tired of this debate. I got the sense that he wants to wash his hands of it, that... Labor wishes that they could have the vote tomorrow and just be done with it and get on with something else because they know they are losing a lot of altitude because of it, and they want to be talking about cost of living and a lot of other things, but they can't because they're talking about this, which is going down and which has become a referendum also, mm. I think, on... Uh, Albanese and the Labour Party's exactly. close links to the, you know, all the big corporates and all the other woke organizations, rather than being about actually, you know, helping, you know, kids in Aboriginal communities, it really does seem to be about the egos of an awful lot of people in, you know, the eastern suburbs and lower North Shore and places like that. I mean, it's become a referendum almost on Albanese himself. You know, his political fortunes are so closely tied to this. But, you know, I'm interested, James, in your thoughts on, on what I just um, revealed in my editorial there, that the Yes campaigners still believe there is this narrow path to victory. They say it's getting narrower based on the voters who are either undecided or disengaged. Look, I heard you talking about that. I heard the Scott Morrison analogy there. I mean, a crucial thing, of course, uh, in 2019 was that he had to find the votes in electorates. The Yes campaign has to find the votes across the country and in a majority of states. So mm. that's a double bar. They've got to hit pretty much, the, uh, you know, the experts say about 52 percent of the vote to get that. I don't think they're anywhere near that. Now, four weeks and there are some disengaged voters here. But I just think that the cynicism in the country right now is, even if you're not engaged with this issue, with the voice, with Indigenous affairs, I think an awful lot of people are going to look at this and say, if the government wants me to vote for something, my first instinct is going to be no, especially if I'm doing it tough and I'm being made to go out and vote for this thing that's not going to affect me, that has the potential to be divisive. You know, and I think Anthony Albanese, he must know that at this stage... He, the responsibility for this, for dividing the country, because no matter what happens on October 14th, this country will be divided mm -hmm. the next morning because he decided to do this and go to the electorate with a model that yeah. everybody said was too wide, too big, too dangerous, and was attached to treaty and truth, as he said, on his very first promise when he was elected last year, and now he's trying to walk back from that. Mm. Um, I'm sorry, Sherry, it just, it just doesn't make any sense. Uh, but, you know, this is on him, and I think he knows it. Yep.